homogeneous systems, that is, systems where it's AX equal to zero opposed to AX equal to a generic B, are really nice and easy to work with. And they have a bunch of properties that are convenient for us. So first up, I'm gonna note that the zero vector, this is the vector that's got a zero in every single component. This is always a solution to AX equal to zero. Now, why is this the case? Suppose I took A and I multiplied it by the zero vector. You're probably guessing this is gonna be the zero vector, but we should check to make sure that this works. And I want to note for the moment that, yes, it's the zero vector, but if this is generically going to be an M by N matrix, then this zero vector that we have is a zero vector which is living inside of Rn. And we need that to be the case in order for our matrix vector product to be defined. That is, the N that we have here has to match the N that we have over there. And then the way we defined a matrix times this vector was to say, look, I'm going to take the first component of the vector, which is zero because it's a zero vector, and I'm going to multiply it by the first column of the matrix, which is A1. And then I'm going to take the second column, second component of the vector, which is another zero, and multiply it by the second column of my matrix and go all the way down until I take the nth component of my zero vector, which is again zero, and I multiply it by the nth component of my vector, which indeed is just going to be the zero vector. But here is where it gets tricky because this zero vector is going to be living as an element of R M now. Another way to think about this is that an M by N matrix is always going to take N vectors and spit out M vectors. So it's going to take the zero vector living in R N and you get out of it the zero vector living in R M. Now, this is an algebraic property. We haven't seen any geometry, we haven't seen any specific example, just follows by our definition of matrix vector product. But it's worth noting here that we saw this geometrically in the previous video. That was to say that homogeneous systems, they went through the origin. That is to say that the zero vector was always a solution to a homogeneous system. So we should expect this result. Next property. I want to suppose that I have two different solutions. I'm going to call them x1 and x2. And both of them are two different solutions to the homogeneous. Well, then I can do all sorts of things. For instance, suppose I took the sum of these two. I took AX1 plus AX2. So I've got two solutions that live in the homogeneous, and I add them together, and then I say, well, what does that solve? However, we have a property for matrix vector multiplication. It obeys many nice properties. One of them is distributivity over vector addition. And that's this algebraic property. It's AX1 plus AX2. And we could go and open this up and, and look at the definition of vector or matrix vector multiplication. We could prove this property, but I am going to cite it as a property of matrix vector multiplication. But nonetheless, after I've distributed it, well, AX1, this was just going to be equal to zero. And AX2, that was just going to be zero. So zero plus zero is just going to be equal to zero. In other words, if I have two solutions to a homogeneous, their sum is also a solution to the homogeneous. I can do the same thing with scalar multiplication. If I got a solution to the homogeneous, I could multiply it by some scalar, and, and that is all going to be a solution to the homogeneous for much the same reason. Now, broadly, if we go back to the geometric view of it, where the solution to a homogeneous system is just some equation that's going to be going through the origin, then what we're effectively saying is that if I have this vector like, say, x1, and some other vector over here like an x2, then the sum of those two vectors, which is going to live way over here somewhere, that's my x1 plus my x2, we're saying that's also a solution. But geometrically, this makes sense. If I got two vectors on a line, then their sum is also going to be on a line. So algebraically and geometrically, it makes sense that we can add homogeneous solutions and they stay on the line. Note that this property is not true in the inhomogeneous situ situation because since my vectors are sort of off the origin, then if I add two vectors, I sort of double my shift away from the origin and everything falls apart and you don't have this nice property in the inhomogeneous situation. 
third property that we're going to look at. I want to imagine that I have some particular solution. In other words, an AX and I call it P. And this solves not the homogeneous, but the inhomogeneous now. It solves an AX equal to B. Now, I want to also suppose that I have some other solution, which I'm not going to give a little subscript to. It's just going to be some X where AX equal to B as well. As in, it's some other solution to the particular. Well, now I want to do the following thing. I want to see how much does this new solution, the X, differ from that particular one we'd already chosen. They're both solutions to the inhomogeneous, but by how much do they differ? Well, one way to measure that would be to figure out what happens to the difference between the two, X minus this particular solution. So I've got two solutions to this inhomogeneous. I'm looking at their difference, and I'm going to see what happens to their difference. Well, what do we know? Uh, I can use distributivity as well. So this is just going to be AX minus AXP, where I've also used the property. I can take the minus one, and I can move it out front as well. So a combination of distributivity and moving my minus sign. But now that I have it in this format, I'll note that AX would just equal to B, and AXP was equal to B, so this is B minus B, so this is equal to zero. In other words, what I have for my X minus my XP is this is equal to a solution to the homogeneous. And if I take that whole scenario and rearrange it, I can say something like this. My solution X is a particular solution plus a homogeneous solution. So my big takeaway here is that every solution to AX equal to B can be written as the sum of two things. One, a solution to the homogeneous, and the other, just one particular specified solution to AX equal to B. In effect, if you know one solution to AX equal to B, it's kind of good enough, because all of the other solutions to AX equal to B are that one that you've chosen plus various homogeneous solutions. Another way to think of this is that if you've solved the homogeneous system, and then in addition to solving the homogeneous system, you've gone out and found not infinitely many, but just one solution to the inhomogeneous, then you can get all solutions to the inhomogeneous by taking that one particular one you found and adding to it various homogeneous solutions.